Chloe, are you excited for the game? Yeah. I hope the that weird guy doesn't come back. Yeah, that'd be nice. Hey guys, uh, I'm here for the game. Uh, no, only Jed's juicy's allowed. Well, yeah. I got I got a blue shirt. I got the long sleeves. It's forbidden. Only oh. Jed's jerseys. <sighs> okay, fine. <gasps> <gasps> Bojo and welcome back. I'm Aaron. I'm Owen. And this is Samuel. And I'm Chloe. And together we are King Kingfisher Games. Games. Today we're talking to you about the third forbidden game in our series. And that game is Forbidden, forbidden Sky. Sky. It's uh it's the last game in the trilogy, but it's actually the second one that we owned. Uh, we didn't get uh, Forbidden Desert until this year. But, uh, Nicole, you want to read that? It's for two to, two to five players. It takes about 60 minutes. Um, and it's for ages 10 plus. Yeah, so uh, join us at the table to find out how this game plays differently than the other ones. Okay, so here we have Forbidden Sky, the height of danger. This one's produced by Game Right Games. So yeah, there's the rule book. Uh, some of the components. What do we got here, guys? A spaceship. What do you see? There is a new one. Uh, what's this called? Oh, that is the starting grid. That's the grid tile. There is a new tile that is in none of the other games. Mm -hmm. It has an arrow and all of these stuff. And like in the second game, there's a launch pad. But for a spaceship this time. There's this. Yeah. Okay, so uh, there's also all the tiles. These are gonna be the main main way the game's going to move forward. These just get shuffled and placed into a draw file. Um, the starting grid will go in the middle. And which way do we want that arrow facing? North. North? Yeah. Okay, which technically, yeah, would be that way. <laughs> uh, so there's also these. There's tons of them in the box. Yeah, so those are the wires. I believe there's two different uh, lengths. Um, Can you find different ones? We're not going to need all these for the game. We'll just take a look at them. Can you find different ones here? Oh, there we go. There. So the tiles go into a pile. The starting grid grid grows in the goes in the middle. The rocket ship uh, sits on the launch pad. Owen, can you show that? Launch pad. And then there's a cube, a little square, sticking out to fit in here. Um, here. Okay. Nice. This is the new uh, storm, uh, storm tracker. We will put it at a three player, three player uh, difficulty. in the stand where everyone can see it. Next we're going to divide the cards. So these are the uh, player cards. This is our difficulty. Uh, you want to show those off, Cole? So these are gear cards, the gear on the back. These are the storm cards with a storm on the back. They'll just get shuffled and placed off to the side. We will play a novice game. So we just need those components, guys. So we need one of these, uh, well that, that, that'll be the base. We need one of these large conductors, three of these small ones. These can go back in the box. And then three of these. I think those are lightning rods. So a 
this expansion or this game, the player cards go back to having color on the side, on the back and the front. I liked it in Forbidden Desert where the back of them was kind of a neutral color so you didn't know. But Owen, you want to pick a card? Chloe. All right, and I'll take orange. So the ones we didn't pick, Navigator, Electrician, and Climber, those will go back in the box. I have the Medic. I... Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Sound that one out. Not Smith. Not Smith. There we go. <laughs> not Smith. I'm yep. the Not Smith. And I got the Survivor. Nice. So everyone gets two of these uh, black arrows and put them at the top of your... Yeah. Top of your hearts and top of your rope. Just like this. You'll take these, uh, those large and small copper wires and put them off to the side. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then everyone takes their color and put it on the landing pad, which is this ship, which uh, looks an awful lot like the one from Forbidden Desert. If you haven't had a chance to check that video out, I'll leave a description in the link. No, a link in the description <laughs> below. Okay, and that's the setup. Um, on a player's turn, you can take up to four actions. Um, one is moving, and that's just up, down, left, and right. The next thing is scouting, which is taking the top card from the, um, from the draw pile, placing it face up in front of you. You can have up to three of those cards. Um, yeah, let's do. Next is um, exploring. Next thing you can do is explore, which is placing your tile on. You'll notice there are some um, orange. Those are supposed to be copper colored, copper wires. They can connect to any tile um, adjacent to you. So I would need to move first and then be able to place this. If you can see, there's a yellow circle on here. We would be looking for a yellow circle to connect that. Let's see. Once that's connected, circle. yeah, one of these, and that's a small circle, so a small conductor would go on it. Okay. Um, then part of our part of the novice difficulty, we need to get one of these ones and the lightning bolt. The symbols have various tiles on them. This one has a lightning bolt, so that would let me put on a lightning rod. Also, a teleporter. You can move between any two teleporting uh, tiles, as well as this is a Faraday cage, which protects you from electricity. We'll get it into electricity in a little while. Um, there's also these red ones, with um, you put them in a circle to get. Yes, yeah, we need those red ones to get the launch pad on, um, in place. Another symbol, oh, <laughs> another symbol on the car tile is this um, wind shelter that will protect you from being blown over from the wind. And uh, last one is this one. Um, what is it? A gear. And there's a gear. Yeah, so that gear, once you place it, you'll get to draw one of the gear cards. So if I play this here, then these connect, and because it has a gear on it, you have to have your guy there. Um, I would get a gear card, and I got a jetpack. Nice. What's the jetpack ability? Uh, move to any tile on the platform. You may take one other pawn. On, on your tile with you. Nice, that'll help move around the board a lot faster. So I'll just put it here and when I want to play, play it, yeah. I would put it... Uh, what does it say? Uh, play it any... T um, uh, it's not an action and you have to discard after you use it. Okay, nice. So I would place it... Uh, Just in a discard pile. Yeah. Showing that it's that it's been used. 
Now the last thing that you can do is place these wires. So we would need the board to look like this. So here, nope, that still doesn't work. Here we would try to connect the small conductor to the large one, but our wire is just not long enough. So we would need something, another conductor to be able to reach that. So a large one could reach there, small one could reach there. After a player takes their four action cards, or four actions, they'll draw storm cards equal to the uh, number of where the marker is. So at the, at the start, we'll just be drawing one card. The storm deck has various things such as high winds, storm intensifies, that's where you move this up. The wind blows, that's indicated by where, what direction this wind arrow is blowing, where each character would move over in that direction. If you were unable to, you would lose one on your rope. When lightning strikes, any player that's on a lightning rod tile would be zapped and lose one, lose one of their hearts. Oops, you lost all your rope. <laughs> Winds change, so this has the arrows of which way the arrow, the wind is going to rotate. Uh, let's see, this one's going counterclockwise. Boop, boop. So we'll go there. Lightning strikes, high winds. Yeah, a lot of, lot of uh, nasty stuff. That's how. That's what happens after your four actions. Once we get all the necessary pieces, the board will look something like this. Once the last tile or the last wire is put on. No, sorry. Before the last wire is put on, all players need to be on one of the four tiles of the launch pad. Then the last wire can be added. Uh, you'll hear a beep. There we go. Yay. So that's how we would win the game. If we could get all the components from whatever card we're using, get them all wired up and then connect it to the launch pad. There's four possible ways to lose in this one. You can be electrocuted if the clip on any player's health reaches the red X. You lose if you fall off. Uh, fall off by losing the last end of your rope. You can be swept away if the storm reaches the top. Or you could be abandoned if the rocket takes off before everyone is on the launch pad. There you go. We forgot about you. No! <laughs> Wait, I'm on the red one though. <laughs> Red. Oh yeah, but not the launch pad red. <laughs> so there you have it. That's Forbidden Sky. Owen, what do you like about it? Um, I like it that the spaceship is pretty cool and the, that the all the components work up work together to make noise. Yeah, the electrical circuit and yeah. everything. Yeah. What about you, Chloe? Um, I like um. Uh, the same thing as Owen, I like the realistic noises that <laughs> yeah. this spaceship makes, and I thought it was actually going to lift. <laughs> <laughs> I did too the first time we played. Uh, something I like is the wind change. I like how you have to be aware of what direction the wind arrow is pointing because you don't want to fall off your rope. Uh, but at least the gear cards help offset a lot of the storm cards. But uh, yeah, this one's probably my second favorite. I think Forbidden Desert is the best out of the three. 
Forbidden Sky is my next, and then Forbidden Island is... It's good. It's good for beginners. Good to introduce someone to the hobby. Like and subscribe for more board game content. We like to have fun here, and you do too. Gigawab Min Minowa. And just so you know, that means I'll see you later.